everyone, welcome. This is Lisa from Stamp and Create with Lisa. And I'm just gonna try and find the video so I can see your comments. <coughs> I apologize. I just have a bit of a tickle in my throat. So, hi Vicki, welcome. Just trying to find the video really quick. There we go. Just so I can see comments. Perfect. So welcome. Um, good afternoon. There. So today I am going to be using the Will Walrus Be Friends stamp set. I did a little bit of prep work beforehand. I've been really loving this stamp set. It's a lot of fun. It's super cute and it's just really easy to use. It's lots of fun to color and I'm going to also use some new product out of the holiday catalog the new Snowfall Accents Puff Paint because I really love it. It's a lot of fun to do. Um, it'll be noisy for a second when I do do this part, but that's okay just with the heat gun. But I wanted to show you. So to start, I cut two of everything just to be safe. I have a five and a half inch by eight and a half inch card base, which happens to be scored at four and a quarter. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold that. Next up, I have a four inch by five and a quarter is what it should be, yes, piece of cardstock that I'm actually going to run through the Big Shot. And I do believe I'm going to, no, I'm not gonna twist this. So this is based on a design I found from Katrina's Creative Heart, but I changed up the colors based on something else that I had seen. Um, and I, she didn't add the puff paint, so we're going to do something a little bit different. But I'm going to take my Big Shot or any die cutting machine that you like to use. Just trying to get it so that it won't hit my stand here. So I am going to use the High Seas 3D embossing folder. And I really like this embossing folder. It is one of our new 3Ds. so. You may have seen me pull out the additional blue plate and it is just slightly thicker than one of the clear plates. So with this new 3D embossing folders, the old way will still work. You just won't get that deep 3D impression uh, unless you were to add some additional shims just to make everything a little bit tighter. So we'll get this out. So this is the 3D embossing folder plate, and it's not in the catalog, but the number for it is 149658. So if you have a big shot, you will require this for the 3D um, folders, unless, again, you don't want that 3D look to it. So, thankfully for me, I want my design, my waves to go this way, and that's the way the folder is set up, so I actually should show you this way. If you take your piece of paper and you line it up on the black line that looks part of our logo, hi Amanda, welcome. Um, with that black line, it will help keep things slightly straight. So, we'll put that there, put this in here. And hopefully you can see the texture that it gave. It is quite nice texture. So I'm gonna set all of this aside for now. There we go. And to make life easy, I'm actually gonna glue this down already or adhere it down. So I'm going to take my tear tape and actually I should, so there's this side where the waves are up and this side, I think I like this side better, so I'm going to go here with my adhesive. That's the nice thing about the 3D embossing plates is you definitely have two sides to pick from. You just have to decide what suits your project better. So hopefully you guys are having a great day. It's been busy around here. I've been cleaning. I hate cleaning, <laughs> but this is more organizing than cleaning. 
um, you literally couldn't sit at my desk this morning. So I had to stop, make an exception, and clean. So next up, I have a three inch, I just want to double check it, by four and a quarter inch piece of black cardstock that's going to end up about here on my page. But before I do that, I'm going to take a two and a half by three and three quarter inch piece. Now I actually did this in shimmery white cardstock and I am going to, I decided I wanted to do this guy because I want the iceberg in order to use the puff paint really well. Um, the puff paint also works really well with this guy here, but I wanted that extra length in this. So, we'll grab a block. Um, I don't think he fits on this block. Ah, he will if I put him on an angle. If you're new to stamping, don't overhang the stamp off your um, block. That's how you make errors. And I'm going to ink it up in Memento ink. And Memento being on a felt pad, you can kind of wiggle it, the stamp a little bit to pick up more ink. You don't want to do it too much because it will wreck the pad eventually, but our foam pads you definitely don't want to do that with. Okay. And I'm going to just give that a quick clean on the chamois. So next I am actually about to send a present to a friend of mine. It's a very belated birthday present which is really not a surprise around here. <laughs> um, I'm always seems to be late but I think it's just going to say it's your birthday. So I'm going to grab a different block. So if you are new to stamping, picking a block that's an appropriate size is actually very important because that's how you avoid all the extra halos or shadows around it. So I'm hoping that's very straight. If not, I do have a fix. That's pretty good. It's good enough. So I'm going to give that a quick wipe as well. There we go. Put that over there. So today I am going to color him first. So I decided to match my card. I'm actually going to color the walrus in um, crumb cake. And my blends are, have seen better days is probably the easiest way to put it. So I have multiples out. I normally wouldn't have this many out, but. So we'll give him a quick color. I saw him colored in crumb cake on somebody else's card and I really loved how he looked. It's something a little bit different than the grays that I've been doing all week. Um, I have one on Friday, I think, where he's colored in Pretty Peacock, and I, the water, I should say, is colored in Pretty Peacock, and I love how it turned out. You'll have to tune in for that one, um, just on my blog at stampandcreatewithlisa.net. So with the blends, I find it's easiest to color in a light color highlight in a dark and Stampin' Up! does a great job of showing us where to put shadows. So I'm just outlining those now. And then to blend it, just go back in in the light and color over the top. And it takes the harshness out of the lines. But still gives it that shadowy look once it dries. There. 
So there's step one. Yeah, Vicki, if you use the, um, well, if you use any of the colors for multiple cards, I do find that they will dry out, but I find too, like when I do um, swap cards or when I use a color for a class, when the lid's been off for hours, that's when I find that I have to replace them almost right away. Whereas if I'm just doing one off for Facebook Live or just for fun, they last forever. It's kind of, it's because they're alcohol based. Like I know the reasoning behind it. It's just um, not what we always want. <laughs> But it doesn't surprise me. Crumb cake's a good color, so like it's a nice neutral color. Um, this is Seaside Spray. So I'm just coloring it in the light. And I'm going to go back and do the dark. And then this one didn't need much in the way of blending, but we'll give it some blending. And then I'm only going to do the light on the iceberg. Just kind of as a shadow. Because I find, well, actually I'm going to cover the, the whole top of it and then just the shadowing on the below. Because I really want to do the puff paint and I just realized how badly it uh, bled onto his tusks. So I'm going to do the tusks in dark to make them stand out a little bit. I maybe could use a color lifter, but I think reality is that I probably colored too soon after snapping it. I probably could have given it a few more minutes. Hi Deb, welcome. So the puff paint. So this is the Snowfall Accents puff paint. It's brand new in the holiday catalog and I love it. It's really cool. You need to give it a good shake and I'm gonna make it so that there's like piles of snow around him. So I've given it a good shake. It's very liquidy when it first comes out it kind of is like water so I'm just going to give it a couple of dabs I'm basically covering up the blue the way I had it but that's okay I wanted the blue below for the spots that I missed just to make it a little more realistic put the lid back on that and I'm going to take my heat tool on high It should be at this end first. And you'll see the puff paint will go from liquidy to almost dry and then it will start to balloon, maybe. There it goes. I maybe should have worked in a smaller area. So, one thing I have discovered is once it's dry, it's dry. And there is, like, it will only puff so much. So, um, and I apologize. I, looking at that video, you saw nothing. So, I will try and do a better job. I'm going to add a little bit more. And I'll try and do a better job of showing you. Uh, I'm sorry, Vicki. Well, I'll try and do it at an angle this time. Hopefully that was better. 
the video's like 30 seconds behind me. <laughs> So here it is. Um, I apologize at this point in the video. Right now I'm still making it puff up on the with the heat tool. So it does take, there is quite a bit of a delay today. So I do apologize for that. But you can see the dimension of the snow. Um, I'll try and show you there. Hopefully you can see it really well. There you go. I'm glad. Thank you, Vicky. So it's a lot of fun. It's very addictive to play with. It looks like real snow because you have zero control over where it's going to land. <laughs> um, and it's kind of fun that way. So next, just to keep moving here. So when you're coloring at the blends, I used the shimmery white cardstock today. I probably should have just gone ahead because I wanted that glimmer to it. I should have gone ahead and used thick white. Thick white is generally better for the blends, but anyhow, <laughs> that's part of the reason it bled. It partly bled because I didn't wait long enough. So I do apologize for that. But we'll get this going. So I'm just gonna adhere it onto here. Oops. I did not want to adhere straight apparently today. There we go. Oh my goodness. There we go. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. So oh, there and there. Okay. And oh, hi Bernice. Welcome. I'm gonna pop this panel up on dimensionals. Because I have the minis, I'm gonna put a little bit well and this card is actually gonna head to the States later today with another package. So, peel the backing off. And, see that went on straight or straighter than it did with the tear tape because I can move that. <laughs> it is so much easier to move dimensionals around than it is to move tear tape. So next up, I am going to add some bling. I was just trying to decide what bling I wanted to add. I have unfortunately used all my Seaside Spray blend, or, um, dots. but I can create some. So I am going to take the rhinestones and a blend, and I am just going to create my own. They won't appear really blue, and but it'll just give them a touch of color. Just give it a second to dry and if I may take your pick tool. So I think I'm gonna go somewhere around here. Oops. Oh hi Valerie, welcome. There. And, oh, I don't think my adhesive came with, oh yeah, it did. 
my paper's still warm from the heat tool. <laughs> Things aren't sticking as well as it should. But there you go. So I'll pick that up for you to see. So I know a bunch of people are just joining us now. I apologize, but uh, so I used the Will Walrus Be Friends stamp set and I'll try and make sure I'm on the screen here. And I colored it with the Crumb Cake and the Seaside Spray Blends. And I also used the new Snowball, sorry, Snowfall Accents Puff Paint, which is a lot of fun. You really got to get using it. I use the new 3D Wave embossing folder as well. Um, I don't think it's called Wave. I apologize. It just arrived in the mail. High C's 3D embossing folder as well, just to give a little bit of added dimension to the crumb cake cardstock. So thank you so much for joining us today. I really do appreciate it. You can pick up the supplies for this card and more in my online store at www.lisahenderson.stampinup.net. If you have any difficulties today, please just let me know. Um, we are uploading a brand new website today and that is causing a little bit of disruption um, to the regular program, but it will be back up and running by tomorrow. It just takes time, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but if you need any help, let me know and I'd be happy to help you. Okay, thank you. Bye.